Gopijana Bala Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 
Shri Prabhupada ke Kantaraj Shri Bhagavatam ki Jai Go Premanandi Hari Bo Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Reading Shrima Bhagavatam, Canto 3, Chapter 21, Text 41, Chapter entitled Conversation Between Manu and Padma. Translation and purple by Your Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Shiva Prabhupada Ki. The area resounded with the notes of overjoyed birds, intoxicated bees wandering there, intoxicated peacocks proudly danced, and merry cuckoos called one another. Purport. The beauty of the pleasant sounds heard in the area of the surrounding Lake Bindu Sarova is described here. After drinking honey, the black bees became maddened, and they hummed in intoxication. Merry peacocks dance just like actors and actresses, and merry cuckoos call their mates very nicely. Omagyanta Vedandasya Jnana Shalakya Chakshamitam Yena Tasme Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Yena Bhugave Swayam Rupa Garamayam Dadati Swavedantikam Panchakapa Turujascha Kripa Sindhu Vievacha Patitanam Pavnevyo Vaishnavyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Garadhara Shri Vasudhi Gaura Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare When the mercy of the Lord is uh, taking over then the devotees are maddened by love of God. This is the scene here with the appearance of this lake this lake has appeared from the tears of the Lord. So such an auspicious occasion that all living entities surrounding are just overjoyed with love of God. As we can see here that um, the bees are humming. So this is uh, explained in the Chaitanya Chaitanya in relation to the tree of devotional service the desire tree of devotional service. It says that the, um, the devotees, by the, the spreading of love of Godhead, they start to hum. <laughs> yes, devotees are humming very blissfully. And you see here, just like the bees become mad and intoxicated from, from the honey. And you'll see descriptions in this same canto about the kingdom of God. So it's described there that um, there's a nectar flowing through the air. <laughs> like, you know, you could open your mouth and you have some nectar like this. And uh, there's all sorts of birds there, beautiful birds who can sing very nicely. But they quiet down, they stay silent because they want to hear the glories chanted by the, the bumblebees there. They're chanting the glories of the Lord. But in 
with us in the scriptures. So they are humming. This humming is you know, a sign of like satisfaction. <laughs> and we have peacocks dancing like actors and actresses. So Vindavan was famous for its peacocks. And everyone likes to imitate them. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> but um, you told us Kadamba Kalmaj, he had his, uh, his legal name is uh, Paul Koch. But the, if you initial it, it'll be like P and Koch. So he's known as a peacock. So the, his, when he was a kid, his, his friends in school used to say, hey, Peacock, <laughs> when you start acting, where you, where's your feathers? Show us your feathers, like this. So then he got his jacket, he unzipped the jacket, and just <laughs> like this, you know, and he started acting like a peacock. And we see that in the pastimes of Krishna, you know, they used to play, they used to chase after the birds' shadows as they flew through the sky. They used to play leapfrog and chase after the frogs into the water. And uh, they used to imitate peacocks, animals like monkeys and peacocks. And there's a nice illustration. So you see Krishna, like, you know, bobbing his head like a peacock. <laughs> and they would play so much, you know, they would scream into the well ill names. So it's quite interesting. Like boys, you know, they like to swear and cause you to say. <laughs> ill names means they're swearing, you know, cursing, you know. <laughs> This is uh, the brudge mood, you know, it's like <laughs> the formalities are to the side to increase rasa. And uh, yes, yeah, so the dancing of the peacocks is going on and you, there's a temple in Varshana. I forget the name of the temple, but it's known as the peacock temple. So at that place, the pastime of Radha and Krishna took place of when they dressed up um, in like peacock feathers and had a, a, a rasa dance. And uh, they danced together like peacocks. <laughs> and Krishna has a peacock feather on his head. And how did he get such a peacock? So a feather on his head. So the story goes that Krishna is playing his flute. And it's not ordinary flute playing. This flute playing is unheard of in the universe. It makes everyone go mad. It says, like, the wives of the demigods, their hair loosens, their clothes loosen by hearing this flute play. Um, Lord Shiva goes mad and starts dancing. And Lord Brahma, he, from his, the husband of the goddess of learning, Saraswati, from her, all these, like, musical arts come from her, you know. This Sarigama Padanisa, <laughs> this all comes from her. You know, and the Gandavas, they're known in the universe for being great singers and musicians. But upon Krishna playing his flute, everything just loses it, pretty much. Uh, the rocks start to melt, and, and rivers freeze, you know, they stop flowing, they go the opposite direction. You know? um, and the birds, they pretty much just in standstill. The cows, uh, they just, they're stunned. They just become stunned like statues. And they try to like stop, you know, block their ears with their hooves, you know. And they're trying to, you know, make sure they don't get stunned by Krishna's flute, but it's too late, they get stunned. So this is the nature of Krishna's flute. It just, uh, um, it makes everyone go mad. So the peacocks, they were dancing to Krishna's flute playing. And they were dancing like, like anything. And they were so happy by Krishna's flute playing that the only gift they could give was the peacock feather. And Krishna is so humble, even though he doesn't need to be. He's so humble that he puts the peacock feather on his head. And, as a, and this is how we remember the pastime. He was so pleased with the, the dancing of the peacock. Okay, I will put this on my head. So humble. <laughs> Krishna's humility comes up in many instances. There's a pastime where Krishna and Balaram dance. 
So every day, Krishna and Balaram go out to herd the cows with the cowed boys. Uh, unlimited number of cows. Nanda Maharaj had 900,000 cows. <laughs> and uh, Krishna, before he even takes bath when he wakes up in the morning, he goes straight to the cows. Namo Brahmaya Deva, Go Brahmina Itaicha. That he's, the, the cows are more dear to him than the Brahmanas. Go Brahmana Itaicha. So he goes straight to the cows and the cows are mooing. They will not move. They will not let anyone touch them because they want to be milked. So cows, they usually get milked first thing in the morning, like 5 a.m. or something like that. They won't let anyone milk them. They want Krishna to milk them. So they are mewing like this. And then Krishna also, he has like Jaffa beads. He has beads as well. But he has beads for calling each of his... Uh, groups of cows so you know they have there's like one called Murdanga Muki which means Murdanga head they have a head shaped like a Murdanga <laughs> so they have different groups and he's calling them like that Murdanga Muki Surabi like this and they come running and he's counting cows and his Japama is all jewels actually he's when he chants calling the names of the cow and uh, Mother Yashoda, she's always in anxiety for Krishna's safety and comfort, you know. And Krishna, his feet are very soft. You know, the gopis say, like, how we try to put, we are so worried about Krishna's feet. They're so soft that he even feels like our own breasts are very hard when we put them there. So when we think of him walking in the forest, there's so many thorns and stones, he'll hurt himself. And they faint from thinking about this. So then Mother Shud is worried about Krishna's feet too. Hey, you're going to the forest, wear some shoes. And then Krishna's like, no, I will not wear shoes. Why not? Because the cows, they need shoes too. They're also walking. So if they don't have shoes, I will not have shoes. He's like, Krishna, come on. Wear some shoes. This is not practical. No, I will not. Unless you make shoes for them, I will not wear shoes. Uh, and if you think about how many shoes they have to make, it's like nine times, nine times four, which is like 3.6 <laughs> million <laughs> shoes they have to make. <laughs> but the animals in the forest, they're also devotees of Krishna. They understand, oh, Krishna's walking without shoes. So what do they do? They stampede the whole pathway where Krishna's going to walk. If there's any stones or thorns, they make sure there's no thorns and they pound the stone into dust, soft, soft dust. And that's why this dust is worshipped by, by everyone, the dust of Vrindavan. Because Krishna has walked bare feet there. The gopis have walked there. The devotees have walked there. And it's, it's sort of hard to find that dust there now. Because there's a lot of, like, uh, uh, what do you call it, tarmac. They put so much tarmac everywhere in the walking path. But if you walk around Govardhan, right next to Govardhan, there's paths that still have this soft dust. It's so soft. And it, it sparkles. It's, like, shiny. You know? So devotees, when they walk through these paths, they, they roll in it. So each dam has a special, like, duty you have to do. So like in Mayapur, it's Kirtan, right? In Jagannath Puri, it's honoring Mahaprasad. <laughs> but in Vrindavan, it's to bathe in the dust of Vrindavan. So devotees are like getting all the dust and go, Patasatya Maharaj does this every afternoon. <laughs> he takes his div disciples out for a walk around Govardhan. He stays next to Govardhan. So they go for a walk, and then he just took a, he sits down, and all the disciples just start pouring the dust of Vrindavan on him. <laughs> Such mercy. You know, we, we, this dust is magical. We pray to this dust of Vrindavan. I think I even have some in my Jaffa bag. <laughs> a small little thing here. <laughs> I can't get it out. It's in a small little... <laughs> One, one devotee gifted it to me. What a gift, the dust of Vrindavan. So 
So we are praying to be uh, covered in such dust. And then, just like the cuckoos, this, he says, you're calling to their mates. The sound of the cuckoo is so sweet. Uh, it says that the cuckoo is very special, uh, that it doesn't drink, it only drinks rainwater directly from the clouds. That's it. So in the same way, devotees are like cuckoos. They only want to hear Krishna's pastimes. They only want to be absorbed in Krishna's uh, name and, and qualities. Just like the cuckoos, they only want unalloyed devotion to Krishna. Sabai Pumso Paro Dhamma, Yato Bhakti Yadotsuge, Haitati Apurita, Yadap Masupasigati. That the supreme religious principle for the human being is a loving service to the transcendental Lord, which has no motivation and no interruption. This can fully satisfy the self. So that's what the devotees are after. They don't want any you know, mix. They're not in for business with the Lord. None of this. They just want to serve the Lord to make the Lord happy. Just like Shumati Radharani says, if this, uh, if my unhappiness, if my unhappiness is Krishna's happiness, then that's my happiness. <laughs> like this. So, I forgot about the dancing of Krishna and Balaram. This is amazing. It intoxicates everyone. So this pastime, so Krishna and Balaram, they go to herd the cows in the in the forest, and then they start decorating themselves. So their mothers, Rohini and Yashoda, they put they decorate them with like expensive nice silks and and jewelry and jewels like that. But they start taking off the jewels and they start decorating themselves with the leaves and, and the and the ointment, you know, from the oxides. They start decorating themselves with the the jewels of the forest, you know, berries and stuff. So the cowboys, they help out. They start decorating Krishna and Balaram because they're creating a stage. All the animals are there watching and different instrument players are put on stage and now they're going to dance. And they dance like anything. And this is, they have nice long hair. This is before they went to Gurukul. So they have nice long hair. So Krishna's hair, because they're in the forest, the hair is kind of like nearly matted, you know. It looks like the, the feathers of a crow. And then they start dancing and they see their hair just dancing with them. And as they dance, um, they sort of do like nearly break dancing. It's amazing. <laughs> uh, and Balaram, he's in the middle and he's doing like a handstand on one hand. And he's spinning like this. Ooh, break dancing. <laughs> this is where it started. And then Krishna... He's doing cartwheels around Balaram while he's spinning in the middle, while at the same time playing his flute, at the same time getting the dust from Lord Balaram's feet and throwing onto all the devotees. And they're like, wow. And even the sky started becoming like enamored by this. And they still so started dancing. The trees, everything was just inundated in love from this dancing of Krishna and Balaram. And then the cowboys, they say, wow. You are, you are the best dancers ever. You know, and Krishna goes, yeah, I'm the best. He's like, yeah, you're the best, you know. But then, um, is it Sridham, his, uh, Radharani's sister, uh, brother? Sridham or Sh Subal? Subal or Sridham? Subal, right? Anyway, Radharani's brother is also friends with Krishna. He goes, wait a minute, Krishna. Uh, I don't. Isn't it true that you take lessons from my sister Radharani? I guess so you like from my cousin. You take lessons from her, and then all of a sudden Krishna becomes humble. Like, oh yeah, how can I say I have you know I'm the best dancer when I have a teacher myself? And this is revealed in Chaitanya Charitamrita. You know, uh, Rinadev has been asked, where is you reside at the feet of of the Lord, where is he? Oh, he's, uh, he's at the bank of the Yamuna. Oh, really? What is he doing there? He's learning dancing. Really? He's learning dancing? 
Who's his teacher? The Queen of Vrindavan, Srimati Radharani. Because the love of Srimati Radharani, Bhakti, controls Krishna. We're talking about it. Krishna, liberation, material opulence he can give you, but Bhakti he will not give because he can be controlled. Everyone is controlled in this world by lust, by Cupid, Madan. But Krishna is known as Madan Mohan. He is so beautiful, he bewilders Cupid. Cupid's firing arrows, but then Krishna is more powerful. He's more beautiful. But then Srimati Radharani is known as Madan Mohan Mohini. She bewilders Krishna, who is the bewilder of Cupid. So she controls Krishna with, his, with her love. So then how does this manifest in this world? This type of relationship, this type of love we never heard of. Where someone would go all out for someone else, no matter what. So uh, that manifests in the descent of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Krishna is wondering, what is it about me? that Radharani loves so much? What is it about me that the devotees love so much? I want to taste that. I can't because I'm the object of the love. So then he, he takes the mood of Srimati Radharani and descends in this world as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the golden avatar. So Radharani, her complexion is gold. Tapta kancha na gorangi rade vindavaneshi. It's like molten gold, her complexion. So he took the complexion, the dhuti. Um, why is this? Because Shimati Radharani was worried about Krishna. She's like, okay, I can give you my bhav, my mood, but it will make you go crazy. It will make you jump and, and just like land on the floor and crash. So you take my, my, uh, my color. So then every time you, because Krishna's color is black. So every time you crash, I will take the hit. <laughs> so I will suffer this pain. I don't want you to suffer. So then Lord Chaitanya appeared. And in order to experience this love, it, he manifests the Harinam Sankirtan movement. That's how he expressed it. From chanting the holy name of the Lord and dancing in ecstasy, he was able to experience, Krishna was able to experience love for himself. This is the most esoteric understanding of the Supreme Lord that you'll ever find anywhere. No religion talks about this. No philosophy emphasizes something like this. That God himself wants to taste what it's like to love himself. <laughs> and that manifests in the extreme mercy that uh, Krish Lord Chaitanya he says, my name is Vishwamba. Vishwamba means the maintainer of the universe. So how can I be the maintainer of everyone in the universe if I don't give them love of God? So this is the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sei pancha tattva nirili kita viya siya Kuva prema bandhaniya mudri kadiya pancha lena Rutta prema kanda ashwadhan Yati yata priya krishna bana anikshan That the, tra the treasure house of love of God It's the qualities of Krishna in there. But when Krishna appeared 5,000 years ago It was locked. But the pancha tattva appeared and broke open the seal And plundered its contents. Uh, the next verse I'll try and remember right. Puna puna paya haya maha maha mata Hasagai nache kande maramata That the Panchatattva uh, They sang and they danced Which made it easier to drink that nectarian love of God They had to dance So in Kirtan dancing is helpful <laughs> I don't like the sit down kirtans that, that are popular now, you know. You know, it, it's like, when are we going to get up? You know, when's it going to go crazy? You know, I, I feel like we're just putting a lid on the box, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the thing wants to bubble up. Let it bubble. Why are you, <laughs> why are you holding it down? <laughs> but the Panchatattva, they danced 
and it made it easier to drink more of that nectar of love of God. In this way, they, they laughed, they sang, they danced, they cried. And this is how they spread love of God. This is how they inundated everyone with love of God. So this is our movement to actually Goloka uh, Primadam Harinam Sankirtan, to make Vrindavan everywhere. You know, it doesn't matter where it is. It could be in like, you know, Long Street, you know, where there's all bars and stuff. But no, when the holy name comes through, the spiritual world descends. It could be in a university. You go to UCT. Okay, let's chant and dance there and bring people to spiritual world. Because that's where we belong. Actually, we all belong in Vrindavan. All of us are from there. You know, the, even like the bridge buses, they leave Vrindavan, they want to go to America. You see them, you know, I'm from Vrindavan. Why are you going here then? <laughs> you know, and then they suffer so much in so many ways because it's, you know, cutthroat world. It's not like Vrindavan. And no one thinks about God. It's suffering at every step. But in the spiritual world, there's a dance at every step. And this is what we need to introduce to everyone, that your home is with Krishna in the spiritual world. And the easiest way is by following Lord Chaitanya's example, by uh, chanting and dancing in ecstasy. And taking prasadam. <laughs> chanting, dancing, and feasting. This is our philosophy. This is the pillar. This is how we roll. You know, if when in doubt, you know, it's like, oh, my Krishna Kajas, I don't know what's going on. It's probably you're missing out one of the three. <laughs> Maybe there's no chanting, there's no dancing, or no feasting. Something's missing. <laughs> Just apply yourself. And this is the nature of this movement. It's so uh, sublime and simple, but a very profound. You know, this is why we have the Srimad Bhagavatam. Vyakta Kara Bhagavate Kara Bhara Bhara Kala Yuga Dhamma Nama Sankatana Sara. Krishna Das Kavaraj Goswami says that the Bhagavatam is revealing again and again. Kaha Bhara Bhara. Kaha means like a called out. Bhara Bhara means again and again. Kala Yuga Dhamma is Nam Sankatan. Sara means the essence. So the essence of Kali Yuga, uh, Dharma in Kali Yuga is Nam Sankatan. So, and you see, the introduction to the Bhagavatam is the life of Lord Chaitanya, right? So this is the how to live Bhagavatam, Lord Chaitanya's demonstration of that. So that's what the Bhagavatam is there. It's actually that Prabhupada wrote these books, especially the Bhagavatam. You know, he only slept two hours every night. He really wanted us to, um, to have the Bhagavatam. Why is that? If you look at his Pranam Mantra, Namaste Saraswati Deva, his, as a service to Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, Gauravani Pracharine, he is preaching the message of Lord Gauranga. What is that message? Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Deva Kerava, Palo Naste, Naste, Gopaminata. So, what does he need to do for you to understand this message? Nivaseshya Sunyavadi Pasvasade Shatarina. Impersonalism and voidism has taken over the whole world. So he needs to destroy that. So that is done through the books. Because if we didn't have impersonalism and Mayavad in our heart, then when we hear the holy name, we could just take it up and be like an ecstasy and have no, no problems with it. But because that is residing in the heart, we're kind of like these Mayavad sannyasis in Benares. We don't have, they don't have any faith in the holy name. You know, oh, just a bunch of sentimentalists. You know, you should study Vedanta. What are you doing? Why did you do this? And he was very humble, you know. He says, no, I don't know. I'm just doing what my spiritual master says. Ishwara Puri told him, Nach go bhakta sangi kora sankatan, Krishna nama upadeshi kavasavajan. That you dance and chant in the association of devotees and teach people the importance of Krishna nama. In this way, you'll deliver all the fallen conditioned souls. So this is the uh, combination of uh, understanding the Bhagavatam and the Yuga Dharma. Because if we don't associate with the Bhagavatam enough, Nichiren Bhagavat Sevya, then we cannot preach, we cannot chant nicely. We won't appreciate the holy name.
His Holiness Kalama Khan Maik said that chanting is like a fire and hearing and reading the philosophy is like the, f the fuel, the oil that adds to it. So the more you hear, the more you can chant. And the more you chant, the more you want to hear. <laughs> and the more you feast, <laughs> the, the more you dance, the more you feast. And <laughs> That's why I notice the more I dance, the more I can honor prasadam. <laughs> So we'll end here. <laughs> if you have any uh, comments or questions, uh, can you give them this thing? So if you have a question, you can take that. Uh, you have to say it into here, so then I can get it on the recording. It's already there. Yeah. Any questions? You can just, you don't have to hold it next to your mouth, just like in front of you. It's fine. Hare Krishna Prabhu, very lovely talk. Um, could you speak about the sound of Krishna's flute and the Maha Mantra flute and the connection? So the holy name is Krishna. Nam Chintamani Krishna Chaitanya Savigaha Punasudo Nicho Mukto Jinatam Namu Namana. That it's like Chintamani, a touchstone, the holy name. Whatever you desire, you will get. Be careful what you wish for. <laughs> I remember I was like 10 years old and I was like dreaming of Mauritius all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember like seeing some like holiday show on TV. I was like, wow, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go there. I'm going to go. <laughs> now I go every year. <laughs> I forgot all about it as a devotee. I didn't even care about traveling and stuff. But now I go every year. And like people who go to Mauritius, like they're just old people who worked hard, you know, and now they're spending their life savings on it to go there. And I'm going every year. <laughs> you know, so you have to be careful what you wish for. <laughs> But you, Krishna is really cool. He'll give you the desire in such a way that you don't really care about it anymore and you care more about serving Him. Uh, Chaitanya Rasa Vigraha, that it's alive, it's dynamic. It's that Vigraha Rasa. Krishna is Akila Rasa Mitamuti. He's the complete form of uh, nectarian mellows of relationships of love. Prabhupada uh, translated Akila Rasa Muti as the reservoir of all pleasure. And Punasudo um, Nicho Mukto, that it's complete, pure, eternal, and on the liberated platform. Abhinato Nami Namano, it's non different from the person name. So when you say Krishna, Krishna is with you. Prabhupada says, when you chant Hare Krishna, the spiritual potency and Krishna are dancing on your tongue. So it's not, this is, it's never been, how can you have such intimacy with the Lord that you can touch Him with your tongue? This is the, the blessings of the Holy Name. Because, yes, darshan we can have, but then the curtains close. Maybe the books are there, but you know, if you have no light, you can't read it. A devotee is, yeah, we can be them and with them all the time, but sometimes you need some space. But the Holy Name is always available for you. The Holy Name will always be there for you. It's a person. It's Krishna himself in the form of sound. That we can always be with him at any circumstance. So merciful, the Holy Name. And Krishna's flute, so, Lord Brahma, after uh, he did all his austerities, and then he had a, a vision of Golok Vrindavan and heard Krishna's flute. And then he manifested the Gayatri Mantra. So, I, from what I've heard, the, the Gayatri Mantra uh, is Krishna's flute, or something like that, isn't it? Yeah. Flute. And then he chanted Gayatri and left. That's all I got so far. Thank you. I'm not so. We have to meet a Vanu Gita <laughs> expert. <laughs> uh, anyone else? Chaitanya, the Harinam, you also.
You know, you can pound it in. Right? You know, let's do it. I'll pull it up. <laughs> Share your heart. You know, this is allowed now. You know, I give you permission. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Uh, there's a there's a very nice uh, very nice book I got back from a uh, uh, Midland Temple by by Hindu Hindu Prabhu Harimananda uh, Arian Sanjata. So he's referring from different song of uh, of uh, Acharyas, Narottamta Thakur and all others. The boy is mentioning, is pointing out that in this age, just what you mentioned that yes, we can have darshan, we can have books, but the purpose of all these books, the purpose of all these studies, is to think, and uh, we forget, we actually forgetting the the actual purpose of this movement, which is Harinam Sankirtan. He said, if Prabhupada, Prabhupada actually wrote this, all these books to convince our demonic mentality impersonally, just to get us to change. So if we don't have that demonic mentality, we don't need books. And we can even see that by Lord Chaitanya himself. He was actually preaching to, like, not actual preaching, but sharing with his confidential associates. But mostly he was just chanting. Whenever his house, Shiva's Thakur's house, they always chanted. But when he's like with uh, his confidential associate, Shavudabda, then he start sharing of uh, the pastime of Shumat Radharani, intimate pastime. So the actual purpose of this organization is just chant and dance. Mahavishwar Maharaj told, he told me, like, he said, there's only three things if you want to make fast advancement in this movement. The first one is to chant. Take prasadam and read. If you don't understand, keep chanting, reading, and everything will be revealed. Chanting. So and, uh, we having go nitai, chanitai madhujanda. Our mandate is all over the world. Yes, we have Radha Madhava, we have Radha Radha, Radha, Radha Nath, we have all these Krishna deities, but our mandate is go nitai. And uh, the nice service we have to render to them is just Harinam Sankirtan. Harinam Sankirtan. That's all I can say. Yeah. So uh, I love your I love your association, Prabhu. Please, if you can bless us more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I collect devotees. I'm I'm like always feeling my heart. Like whenever you are here, like outside devotee, they don't really get your association, so they can at, at least get inspired to go out on Hari Nam Sankirtan. Yeah, this is the sign of intelligence. Krishna Bhaya to Sar Krishna. Sango Prada Sapasadam. Yajay Sankirtana Pray Yajanti He Sameda. So that Lord Chaitanya, Lord Krishna, uh, He hasn't come in a blackish form, He's come in a Krishna. And He's Krishna Varnam, He's always chanting the name of Krishna. He's appeared with His associates and weapons. Apparently his weapon is his beauty. <laughs> Very beautiful. And he, with his associates, the Panchatattva. And Yajna Sankirtana Praya. He's worshipped by Sankirtan Yajna. Yajantihi Sumedasa. Those who have good brain substance. Sumedasa. Not, you know, cow dung brain. <laughs> they have good brain substance. They'll take up this worship of Lord Chaitanya. Chanting. And dancing. So this is how we worship. Shishunitai Maya Prachanda.
25%. Anyone else? Have any reflections? Yep. Yes. You have to hold it so I can hear it on the recording. Uh, no, thank you so much, Prabhu, for us uh, going around the world and uh, giving this inspiration. Because, you know, if you've joined ISKCON that time when it was a Sankirtan moment, today it's like you kind of feel slightly out of place, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, what's wrong with this one? You mm -hmm. know, Harinam, honestly, 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 books, honestly, honestly. There's nothing beyond the two. Nothing. Association of the devotees, giving each other those two things. It's what ISKCON is all about. Mm. So ISKCON has become many other things except the two. Mm. So we miss it and we appreciate those who carry that with them and who gave it. And you know, when you do these things with purity, Krishna bless, you get a lot of people that come because they met you. Some haven't met you even around here. They've been traveling. And you and everyone else who's going. So that's like really, very, very beautiful. And then when they come, you can see that they sincere souls that Krishna himself picked. Mm. Yeah, and then they land in the heads that they land in, and then the journey starts. But I appreciate you, and I hope the Lord blesses you that you carry on for long and long and long, and inspire others also. It may look like a crazy vision or weird vision, but the power that it carries for you. Really, this is how you get anyone and everyone to know about Krishna. Personally, I appreciate it. Thank you so much, my teacher. <laughs> so by the mercy of my spiritual master. I didn't want to do high He gave me instruction to do it. <laughs> <laughs> he said, if you want to conquer lust, make high big. And then you must go every day, even if you have to go alone. So, trying to do that. Yeah, it's, <laughs> if it comes across, that it's your life. Yeah. It's beautiful. Thank you for the blessing. It's not to you, thank you, thank you sir. When we went, when we went to Vrindavan, I remember, um, sitting at Moti's house and that soft dust was there and it was really glistening. And I said to myself, I wonder how much of it may be those crushed pearls from that whole thing. <laughs> and then um, I, I'm trying to remember this word, but I did a japa, a shower course with um, Dr. Chaitanya Maharaj recently and he said, I can't remember the word laksh, lakshana? I can't remember the word, the Sanskrit word, but it said that uh, Lord Chaitanya says you will eat in the house of a person who chants. And I don't know the number either, but I think it's uh, 64 rounds of luck. What is, do you know the oh, word? Luck Bhaji. Luck Bhaji. Anyway, I was just thinking of that as you were speaking and it was inspiring. Yeah, you want to eat in a house of someone who has 100,000. 100,000 rounds. Mm. Mm. So I was just thinking of that as, you, as the two of you were speaking. So asking your blessings. Hare Krishna, favorably, please Krishna and Guru Maharaj and all the devotees. Hare Bo, thank you for everything. Thank you. Yeah, and we're not in this alone. Um, you'd be surprised that Krishna accepts us you know, in a group. So we noticed this when we were traveling with Hari Namuchi. So there'll be someone who would read more. Someone who chant more around, someone who's doing puja, someone had like Shalagam Shilas, uh, someone who was like doing like sadhana, like you know, singing the songs like in the temple or something. So not all of us were doing everything, um, but we would come together for Hainam all the time. So it seemed like we were carrying each other wherever we were lacking. So um, yeah, we try our best individually, but if we are in the association of devotees, see, like you're serving together, Krishnamaya and Lord Chandra, he'll accept you together. So if you feel like you're lacking, but you know, if you're serving together, 
then um, the other devotee will carry the slack. <laughs> we don't rely on that, but I'm just mean like it's it's not it's it's a it's a greater way to to advance. I think there's some saying I remember seeing in the airport. If you travel alone, you go fast. But if you travel in a group or together, you go fast. <laughs> Thank you so much. Gantara Shrima Bhagatam ki. Jai. Kripa Pa ki. Jai. Hari Nam Sankirtan ki. Jai.